TV show. I have seen the dark shadows moving in the woods, and I have no doubt that whatever I have resurrected through this book is sure to come calling for me. David, you look absolutely terrific, honestly. You got like, you got like blue on. This is where the worst begins. This is where we must stop. For beyond is the work of madness. The nightmare of insane murder and lingering death. Get inside and lock your doors. Close your windows. Someone is watching you. Someone is waiting for you. Someone wants to scare you to death. This is Albert from the Tuesday Show. You're listening to the goddamn Dave Hill Show, now on a flipping Monday. Wait, wait, it's... Oh, sorry. Oh, God. No. You're an angel, angel witch. 
Is it? Is the theme song still playing? I just blacked out. No, it it, uh, it looped. It was my fault. I'm a enraged. A lot of heat in that closet. I know. It's so hot. In this uh, closet-like closet I'm in. Um, the walls are closing in. Can you guys hear me all right? Yeah. Beautifully. Loud and clear. Anyway, hello and welcome to the Dave Hill Good Time Hour with me, Dave Hill. From before. Hi, how are you? How are you doing, uh, boy criminal Chris Gersbeck? I'm good, you know. And how are you doing, New Jersey chicken rancher? Wait, there was an an, an additional uh, descriptor to your name, Des, that we added last week. Uh, John Ham. Oh, John yes. Ham lookalike. Yes, I like to think that John Ham is a Des lookalike, but <laughs> yeah, you know. I imagine I it's it's fair enough. I I should say, who's older? I think I'm pretty sure he is. Ham, I think so. Ham's got you by a few years. I should say the room I'm in right now is about a hundred degrees. It's the yeah, only yeah. room without air conditioning in my palatial estate. So uh, no, the sacrifice is being made, and when I, when I nod off, well, it's really the dulcet tones my own voice anyway tracy, we, tracy dunbar wrote in the, in the chat des draper sounds about that's... right okay get on it t-shirts <laughs> t-shirts des draper i feel like we can move a few des draper t-shirts sure well definitely only in the the creative mind and and uh focus on work not the extracurricular activities and it's draper doesn't always have the best reputation but I'll take the good stuff for sure. I I've never seen the show really. I've only like walked through the room when it's on, and uh, it's, it's worth it. He seems conflicted. He's got baggage, as you'd say. Yeah. I I I want to get around to watching that show at some point in my life. Maybe on my deathbed, right when they, right before they pull me off the machines. I'll I'll be just like hit play. That's a show I watched like four seasons and then. I got sidetracked and just never went back and finished it. You got it. You got to finish. Yeah. I yeah. saw who's it? Christine Christina Hendricks. I saw her at a Mexican restaurant once. Yeah. Oh yeah. I Come mean, on. I guess I kind of buried the lead because last week I regaled everyone with my story about how I had actually met John Hamm and totally forgot that I'd seen Christina Hendricks eating Did at a Mexican restaurant. But you didn't meet her. You you only saw her. Not I didn't meet him. I don't think I. I'm thinking about it. I don't think I've ever met her because a lot of times, you know, being in show business as I am, I forget that I've met people, and then I say no, I've never met them, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I did meet them, but then on the flip side. Some people I think I've met, I have not met. I've only just seen them on TV. And then I talk to them like I have indeed met them. That's that's the magic of television right there. Magic of television. Um, but no, I no, she was just eating Mexican food, presumably, unless she went off the menu. Um, I'm hoping to tell the story on The Moth at some point. I feel like it's almost there. It has It has all the fixings of an incredible story. Is that a thing when you get really high up in show business, you can just order whatever you want? I think that's a thing. Anyone can do that, Chris. You don't have to be famous to order like a burger at a Mexican restaurant? No, I think anyone can attempt it. I've, I've been known to go to a sushi joint and order the teriyaki myself. I think if you I think you can try to order whatever you want at any restaurant and see what happens. I, I, I know people, and I've heard tell of other people doing this, where they bring their own ingredients to the I've restaurant. Heard, I've heard that too. Which seems aggressive. Okay, let me ask you a question on, on that topic. We had some people over this weekend, and one of our guests brought um, f fixings for her own Bloody Marys. Like, she brought a couple of sticks of celery some spices, her own vodka, and her own tomato juice. And she okay. had Bloody Marys. Can I ask a follow-up question? 
Did yeah, she bring of... enough for everyone to make a Bloody Mary? That was no, a no, I didn't know that there were Bloody Marys until today, and she was here on Saturday. Okay, just a bit of advice. Don't wait. So she brought ingredients for just her to have Bloody Marys in your home. Correct. That's she, she can fuck off. Right. Never, okay. be, never invited back. It, that that might be the case. Um, I have to say. I went to my brother's house for some party once, some holiday, more of a get together, really. Um, and this guy showed up, uh, the husband of my sister in law's friend. I feel like I can now tell this story freely because they're divorced now and they didn't like, they were like, this guy's off doing. I think he actually ended up. Dating his cousin. Holy. If you want details that have nothing. These are the best stories, the post divorce. Um, you know, no, separate. he left his wife to date his first cousin, this guy. So, now, in keeping with the kind of guy. Was it Giuliani? Who, no, but. So, <laughs> I'm at my brother's house and this guy shows up and he, he brings a cooler of beer into the house and I think wow how thoughtful he's bringing beers and he's keeping them cool on the way over that's above and beyond a bit nuts if you ask me but yeah, just... what I quickly learned is then he sits down in a chair sets the cooler next to himself when he would get up to like use the bathroom or something he would open the cooler and set his open beer into the, and what the did guy call, was. Did he call fives on his chair? He basically just brought beer for himself to drink mm -hmm. at my brother's house with no intention. Of sharing. And yeah. he said, my brother said in the past he'd shown up, done the same thing, but also brought a CD player like a boombox and sat and played his own music in the corner. Oh, like wow. that's it strikes me as very aggressive behavior. Like, yeah, why did you come here? Uh, <laughs> also, like he's 15 years old and thinks he's at a high school party. Yeah, which I think the guy probably was mentally 15, which you would kind of have to be to date your first cousin. I, I've seen people do the thing where they bring beer, but don't uh let anyone else have one i don't think i've ever seen someone bring a stereo and play their own music like separately that's is, insane that's is, a power move is bringing the beer and not letting anybody have any is that worse than like bringing the shitty beer and drinking the good beer <laughs> and leaving no. the shitty beer behind that's what i call a dave hill <laughs> no that's <laughs> yeah. not true i always bring good beer but i i always think like you throw the beer and in the fridge and then everyone just drinks everyone each other's beer yeah that's how i always part of the fun but yeah as long as you don't bring a you know six pack oh, you, of yeah, light you, you can't bring natural ice and then drink all the blue moon no well you don't stripe no you, you wouldn't do that if you're a grown man or a grown woman or grown however you identify uh you wouldn't do that have you ever seen uh, Des would probably know more than you, Dave, but have you ever seen someone bring a joint to a party and then just smoke it in the corner by themselves? I've seen that happen multiple times. That's pretty much every person I've ever seen bring <laughs> a joint to. That That's precisely the thing I don't like about... I. One of the many reasons I never got into smoking weed is I always thought it was so stupid how people would, like in college, like sneak into the bathroom and smoke it yeah like i was like this but is off the share. i might smoke my joint before i get to the party yeah that's yeah. fine you that's know that's fine but it's you know it depends on who's at the party if you want to share or not yeah i mean what if it were if it were lee scratch perry i bet you'd want to share it <laughs> he wouldn't want anything to do with my baby weed are you kidding <laughs> he might um if it were George Clinton, you would oh, probably if it were you'd probably want to. If it were Bill Clinton, you would probably you'd probably <laughs> would want to. Sure, I would smoke a joint, Bill Clinton. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Just for the story. 
The number here is 201-584-7071. We have incredible guests tonight, as everyone knows. We'll take a call? Pretty much the, yeah, let's take a call. The MVP, they're going to be on shortly. MVP guest, I think, of, of all time, Dave Windorf from Monster Magnet. Dear friend. And another dear friend, Joe Tate, who... Um, did the artwork for the brand new Monster Magnet album, A Better Dystopia, which is an amazing album of covers. We'll talk about that and all sort where all sorts of things. Amazing yeah, let's take a call. Too. It's amazing artwork. He, Joe's one of the greatest living artists. Caller, are you there? As is E Rock Hellhammer. Let me be clear. Hello? Who's there? Okay, kill them, whoever it is. <laughs> I oh. can't. Is he there? Yeah, go I ahead. Yeah. Hello, hello. Oh, good lord. Is it of Elviral Ca Canaveral of <laughs> Minnesota, Minneapolis? It is, it is. Or as I like to say, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Yeah, we're having a good time here. It's been unusually hot. Uh... I uh, my I went upstairs one morning and then I, my wife looked at me and said, uh, I just did a U. And I'm like, oh, what stupid thing did you buy now? But I found out she uh, went out and bought an air conditioner for a friend of ours who just had a baby and they didn't have an air conditioner in their house. So I found is, out is that, that your long, is that your really roundabout way of saying you commit random acts of kindness, Elvira Canaveral? No, I married somebody who does that. No, but you said she, you, she I said I just commit. I just yeah. pulled a U. I just pulled a U. So you're saying that yeah. she, that you really are the one that does these things. Well, uh, and what she meant by that, and when she was a little, little bit more specific later on, was that I spent money taking care of a friend's need without consulting with the other person first. Okay. All right. That's what I was thinking first. <laughs> you're fr <laughs> framing it a little. <laughs> A little less self-aggrandizing. But I, I have an idea. I want to r run by the uh, Brain Trust. Uh, oh, uh, Nearby, uh, there's a great place called the Mid Midtown Global Market. It's a, uh, it's a little place in an old Sears uh, building that uh, just has food from all over the world. And during the pandemic, they lost their pizza place. And I'm thinking about opening up a pizza place that only sells oversized large slices of cheese pizza for five bucks a five bucks a slice to, you eat that slice like it is or you can take it to one of the shops and have them put their stuff into it and then you roll it into the pizza slice that sounds horrible this That's is a, a lot of work. work i stress to you that i concur this is a horrible idea for how big are these slices that you're charging five dollars and you're rolling them too um uh, uh, um, well, um, there's a uh, thing called the uh, uh, Philly uh, Taco or the Southside Sushi, where you which get which is it? Which is it? Now, of, now uh, you're you're just from, it can't be called both of those uh, things. Like, like uh, it, it's uh, you, yeah, you get a giant. They have this place down there. It's like Lorenzo's or something like that. They got now like, that when, which is you it? Get, You've given us three like names: three inch cheese pizzas, and you get a huge slice. And then you take it down to the gym steak house, and you get a Philly cheesesteak there. And then you put the Philly cheesesteak on the pizza, and then you roll it up, and then you eat it. Kind of sounds delicious. I'm not going to lie. And my suggestion, yeah. I mean, it, it's a destination thing. And my thing is what we can do is we can do it without the bread because there's already going to be the, use the cheese pizza as the bread. So you just put the ingredients in there and then roll it in there. If you want a gyro or a torta. I think whatever happens to the people that attempt what you're describing, whatever horrible fate, they deserve it. That's just, they're flying too close the to the sun. Big smiles on their face. No, but they, <laughs> that's they're gonna get. That's well, you could just have a big slice of cheese pizza if you don't want. If you don't want to go. If you yeah, don't want calm to go down. Do, you know, Isn't that enough? People. Isn't that enough? Dollar seventy-five. For, for many people, it will be. This is the problem. This is why Americans are so unhealthy. <laughs> I'm enraged. Actually, well, I don't you know. know. 
You, actually, to be honest, you just haven't presented uh, an ingredient that sounded good. Why? Why is this phone suck so much that it's delayed? That we he can't clearly can't it's, hear a word I'm saying. It's really delayed tonight. I don't know why. Fuck this thing. Yeah, I apologize. I'm just barreling over you. No, no, it's not you. It's this shitty system we have. <laughs> I'm enraged. Well, thank you for calling. Um, I think well, the real, jury. So, which place do you uh, do we name it? Borgnine's uh, Dutch Oven. <laughs> Or Whoa. do we uh, name it like pie? Like three point one four, uh, pie. Is it Possibly. three point one four squared? I forget. I can't remember. Or pizza Illuminati, pinball investigators. Which uh, I mean depends. Open They're all going to be out of business very quickly, so I think Borg 9 Dutch Oven is the way to go. Because at least that way, someone gets a nice souvenir sign for their uh, garage. Yeah, yeah, the uh, merchandising possibilities are greater with that, too. Oh, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. I'll let you guys go. I appreciate it. Thank you, Elvira. Have a great night. It is 3.14. I have confirmation. What's up, cool? Yeah. And then it goes on and on and on. Is it, yeah, there's it is. many numbers after that. Yeah. 3.14157 or something. Cool. Check out Chris. Yeah, oh, Super Matt, Chat. I just remembered that. The Super Chat is working, by the way, if you want to support this show at all. <laughs> but why would you? Unless you're already supporting us via Maximum Fun, in which case, thank you. You're gorgeous. I'm sorry, it gets so hot in here, I get cranky, as you can tell. It's understandable. Yeah. Where are our guests ready? Um, Have they not shown up yet? I don't think so. A couple minutes early. Um, should we do some crime blotter? I mean, I don't think we ever did it last week. I, um, Let's do some crime blotter. Joe Tate says he's ready. Oh, yeah. Let we have Dave him. Windorf. We don't have Dave yet, but let me go. Okay, grab well, let's wait until we have both of them, Rocks. and uh, we can do. Uh, I'm sure. Let Let's do some crime blotter. Because we didn't get around to it, and we yeah. have some hot hot cases coming down the pike. Save the disco dancer for later. <laughs> I need to watch that movie again. I do too. I was feeling like really shitty earlier today, and I watch was like, the language. Sorry, uh, I was considering putting on Disco Dance Grids. It's just so joyous. Like it's so everyone's so happy. At least at the beginning. Well, yeah, until uh, until the guitar mom. kills the guy's mother, and then you know huh. he's gonna be upset. Okay, the crime, the crime bladder. Wherein we take a, a look at some of America's lesser crimes, which just so happened to have taken place, that's right, in northeastern Ohio, where I just happen to be from. Uh, there's no way you're even prepared for this first headline. You want to take a guess at it, Chris Gersbeck? Uh, does it involve fast food in any way? Not even close. Raccoon in closet keeps resident up at night. You heard me. This Is closet the... on the same floor or a different floor? Well, right. we'll just have to read. We'll have to find out. This is from the Bainbridge Township Police Blotter. Bainbridge? What a sort Bainbridge. of paradise is, is that? It sounds like a beautiful place to raise a family. Well, it is. I can confirm that. Wasn't that uh, Ritz Fulcher's character on Mighty Boosh? No, but hit Bob Fossil. Oh, right. Bainbridge was uh, Matt Berry. Sorry. No, uh, shit. Now I have to look this up. If it weren't so hot in here, I could just have instant recall. I'm pretty That's sure just... Matt Berry was Bainbridge, but I, you know, whatever. Let's run a check on that. Okay. That's one of the greatest shows of all time. The Mighty Boosh. It really is. In my expert opinion. 
So you're saying uh, I'm missing out on something by having not seen it. Oh, you oh, absolutely yeah. have to watch Mighty Boosh. Bainbridge. Oh, Thompson. I'm sorry. Rich. Oh, no, no, no. It was Richard Ayuadi originally, and then it was, uh, and then it was Matt Berry. Wait, what? Richard Ayuadi played him originally, played B Dixon Bainbridge, and then Matt Perry took over from him. Interesting. Yeah. Wait, what happened to the 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 crime blotter music? Oh shit! Jesus Christ! And watch your language. What the fuck? Animal complaint. Sorry. Gordon Gardner Oval. Police apprehended a small mass bandit 2.30 a.m. June 8th from a resident's home. The resident chased the unwanted raccoon there to contain it. Okay, I'm already signed, siding with the raccoon. This is straight out of Grey Gardens, by the way. The responding officer used a snare on a stick to capture the animal and lead it outside where it was released to nature unharmed. It is not known how it got into the house. My theory is that the raccoon put on a gray curly wig, glasses, and a string of pearls and a dress and posed as an old lady. The but we don't, we, we don't have really any information on that. The snare on a stick, that's the like the little cinch. You've got the rope inside the stick that you pull and it kind of goes around the neck. and that, Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like so you can hold them from you can like keep them at more than arms arms length social distance yeah at first i thought it was a drum like a snare drum on a right. stick and i was like i don't like any of this it's gonna like annoy him into submission with paradiddles yeah i could see it um all right let's check out some other crimes while we wait for our guests This one's horrifying. Man arrested for quote unquote beating on walls of apartment complex. Brunswick Hills Township police blotter. Straight from there. Oh God. You, you think oh, it's, it's not gonna happen in Brunswick Hills? Well guess again. Police were called to an apartment at eleven oh four PM May twenty fourth for a loud noise complaint. The suspect, who is in the process of being evicted, was intoxicated. Wait, we keep losing the crime blotter music. God Hit damn it, Chris. Hit the repeat. It's sexy crimes. You got anything? Uh, God damn it, Chris. You got any street crime? Forget it. We've lost the mood. I'm enraged. Don't you know, Chris, you just stack a million crime blotter musics one after another. We've lost Chris. He's gaming. Chris, are you there? I think he's... What's he doing? We've lost him entirely. Checking his email. We see him on the screen. Hey, Chris. Chris. We lost Chris. Oh, well. What's it, What's he doing? We don't know. Let, do we have any calls? Not at the moment. Oh, this has turned into a nightmare. This has turned into an absolute. This is really when my uh, my my skills really shine. How to fill the time when we've lost Chris? We've lost the crime blotter music. When's the last time you went to Washington Square Park? You get kicked out. You're in the riots. No, I don't. I mean, I I was there yesterday. I didn't go today. It was raining. It's daytime. There's no riots in Washington. Where where is this coming? I'm here. It's getting wild at night. Well, I don't, I don't know. This kid goes to sleep at like 9.30. I know. It's kind of great, though. I love it. I have no interest. I don't know. People are getting loose, I guess, out there. Out there in the streets. Oh. Here, here we go. What do, you, what do you got? Um. Dave Windorf is emailing. We're, we're, I'm very worried. He's directing. Chris is direct, directing traffic. Chris is. He's like taking a nine one one call. We'll edit all this out. Yeah. We'll edit all this big lull out. It's 
good groove though. It's a sick groove. Sorry, everybody, for this technical difficulties. It's like jazz. We've lost Chris, so we're trying to. We're letting the show. Trying to get our guests. We're just letting. I'm. I just blacked out. I just blacked out a little bit. We'll we'll edit out this part. Chris, are you there? Chris, where is Chris? He's blinded. He's switching headphones. Here he comes. He had enough of ours. This is what? What's up? We've Sorry. been trying to get your attention since the '80s. <laughs> Sorry, I was sound checking the the guys. Oh, we couldn't. Is, is Dave here as well? He's coming in a second. Yeah. Just... I just I just uh, sent you the the album cover. We got, we're gonna have to edit out a big chunk because we were both just sitting here like, what the fuck is Chris doing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, because usually if I turn my camera off, then you just keep asking where I am. So I figure I keep you can't my... win. You can't win. I really can't. No. No. Well, the, no. It's because the music changed from the crime bladder. Oh shit! I thought I put it on repeat. God. So we totally lost the vibe. Need a back in five minutes sign. <sighs> We're done with the crime blotter. We, no, we, the mood is past. <sighs> it was. Like, I don't feel crimey now. I tried to keep it going, but Dave was like, "Nah, fuck that." It. It's a nah. hundred degrees in here, Chris. My patience. I'm still enraged about the Elvira Pizza Place thing. Yeah, somehow it's we a lost flawed uh, business plan. Somehow we lost Dave in the interim. Hold on a second. We lost Dave. Is he in the kitchen again? I believe he broadcast last time from the kitchen. Chris, when this episode comes out Friday, just edit out this chunk. So it seems like we have a really slick show. When something happens, pick that Our, our reputation as having a slick show is intact. Live. There's always pedal talk. Like Michael, as Michael Braun says. Well, okay. Let's take some calls about pet. What's the number here? I can't even remember. 201. That's all you know of it? I think it is. Oh my god, this is a nightmare. 201-584-7071. Couldn't remember the exchange. That's 201-584-7071. I should write that down. Write it down. I don't have a pen up here. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stick pedals. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have any... Um, my pedal power thing broke. I don't have any way to plug my pedals in. We well, got a call. Let's take a call against my better judgment. Call, are you there? I'm here, Des. Matt from Iowa City. Matt from Iowa City. Coming in strong. What's going on, Matt? Dave, pedal talk. What 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 are your pedal concerns? Uh, my pedal concerns are uh, big muff, overrated, underrated. Uh, I think it's rated properly. I think uh, it's a great pedal. You know, there's many variations on it. There we it. go. What's that? Rat box. Rat box. Overrated. Oh, you're you're moving on. Quick uh, I think the rat, the rat pedal, is 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 rated exactly as it should be. It's a good pedal if you, if that's what you're going for. Uh, I think it's very good. I've I've used it to great right, effect. What's your, what's your desert island pedal? My desert island pedal. No pedal, man. It's all in the hands. Matt, give us one overrated and one underrated pedal. Yeah, thanks, Des. Why didn't he? Did I, why didn't he answer us? Didn't Dodson. he say? Do we lose him? I think he bailed. No, I thought. I thought. I thought, Des. No, I thought you wanted Dave to answer that question because he he's, oh. he's riding the fence on every pedal I throw out there. No, I was throwing. Oh, oh. well, you. I mean, you're just naming classic pedals, so just throwing it back at you. I'm sorry. It's like. I mean, Big uh, Muff is... Any compression pedals overrated? Who uses a compression pedal? For... Get... Drop this call. I'm enraged now. That's why they're over... <laughs> compression pedal. What, did you oh just God. get back... 
you just get back from Guitar Center or something, and you learned about compression pedals, and you thought you were going to... With my, with my Memory Boy. With my Memory Boy pedal. Do you mean uh, Memory Man pedal? Jason Narducci uh, was they showing have a memory some boy compression now. pedals. So. Jason yeah, was... He has two compression pedals. He has two no... He told me why he has two compression pedals. I can't remember what his reason was. It helped drive the volume of, of uh, the live part. Makes of them sound thing. louder than they actually are. Right? Without blowing oh, up. Oh, yeah. That's true, yeah. I don't know. I still say it's all in the hands. Whatever. Not wrong. Um, I probably have a compression pedal here somewhere, actually. As much as bitching as I just did. I'm sure I have one. Somewhere. I got one. What are the what are the pedal con What? What was that, Chris? This what show is that? this show is unraveling. No, my laptop. Chris, you you're going to have to edit so much because <laughs> there's so much bullshit in this episode already of just like what? What? I feel like this show like sets such a precedent that I I just have fun. I just enjoy, you know, things going wrong sometimes. That's what's happening. I do normally, but it's well let, let's get our get it's just so hot. It's so hot. <laughs> hot time summer in the city let's get our guests on here all right they're both bring, bring the music down a little bit they're both ready there he is from the pride of red bank new jersey dave windorf dave you got to turn your sound sound on there i think and then where's where's joe tate there's there he joe is. tate there he is hello there the pride. Yeehaw! What's up, Dave? <laughs> How's it going? Thank you guys for joining us. Well, thank my you. My pleasure. I don't know about Joe, but yeah, it's oh, absolutely pleasure. my pleasure. It's my pleasure. This is an amazing combo. I think this is like a new template for. Uh, we have like we have, you know, adjacent uh, like one artist co collaborators. People coming from different spheres. Yeah, it was really joining fun. forces. Um, I was talking earlier. Uh, Dave Windorf from Monster Magnet, one of my a dear friend from one of my favorite bands oh, out shucks. there in the world, Monster Magnet, who have a great new album out called A Better Dystopia. That's all covers. Spe what a segue! Speaking of covers, another dear friend. Joe Tate did the cover, and it's an amazing cover. Here, oh my God, there's the cover. How slick is this show? So, uh, almost as hey. soon as I say cover, you know, there's I, I, I practiced. I practiced bringing up the image for about two that hours. Was, That's why that everything else slick. is. Unraveling. Okay, it's not blurry, is it? I want to accept it. Oh, okay. No, it looks. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It's good. It was blurry for a second. Now it's super. Okay. Look at that thing. That's amazing. Don't you want to jump in there and arm wrestle that guy? <laughs> I totally which, do. Which arm you want? He's got four of them. <laughs> I love this poster because, well, for many reasons. But, so for the listener, people who, who can't see it and need, need me to be your eyes, it is the famous monster magnet bull god. But then there's like a... Uh, hot naked lady on one side always always good to have on a cover then on the other side is sort of like a like a, a d decaying dead naked lady is that a, <laughs> you got a, it. an an yeah. undead naked lady yeah yeah and uh then there's like the the sort of uh there's all sorts of there's like a scroll, an ancient scroll. Now I'm just losing track. Now I'm just uh, um. The, there's some some like hints of Masonic imagery, maybe. Is that like a yeah. Is that like a fertility god in there too? Any, yeah, yeah. There's my my point is it's amazing. And if I saw this when I was a little kid, I would think, oh shit, I'm <laughs> terrified of this. And I need to own it right now. Yeah, that's pretty much. All right. That's pretty much what we were thinking. 
<laughs> it's perfect. Like you you want to reach out and touch like you expect it's going to be like yeah. one of those velvet black light yeah. posters. It actually bites. You know, we got one. Yeah. That, it'll bite you. <laughs> it's beautiful. How are you guys doing? Yeah, doing good. Good. Um, sitting around here like Joe and I've been working steadily on and off, you know, when the schedules permit on uh, not just the album cover, but on this, uh, these uh, lyric videos. Basically, I know. Semi, semi animated used from the album cover and then beyond with new work. So we just went and now there's going to there's been three of them. And there's going to be two more <laughs> because yeah, they're like awesome. Them. They're awesome. What what? um. Damn it, I just had the album right. There it is. Album right in front of me. How um there's so many great great covers. Um but not but like Monster Magnet if I covers. Do you have a favorite? But this two part question. Do you have a favorite Dave? And Joe, do you have a favorite? Now I realize Joe, I put you on the spot. Yeah. By having a to bit. name your favorite. A little bit. No, Dave, you go first. Dave, this is you the go first, your favorite Dave. song on the yeah. record. Yeah, it's hard because I really like them all. I mean, you know, these songs have been with me since I was a kid almost. Most of them, so I love them all. But I gotta say, the one that's going to be most fun to sing live is Mr. Destroyer. Who doesn't want to sing a song called Mr. Destroyer? Yeah, that'll be you know? so. Will Will you play a lot of these live? I don't see why not. Unless people throw me out, I don't think they're going to care who wrote them, you know. Mr. Destroyer, that was that was the first video, right? Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. I think. Well, okay, Joe, what is what is your favorite? It's it's hard because I, I I like all the tracks and it's been fantastic working on the videos. I'm you know I'm not, I'm not trying to do a, like a cop out answer, but like uh, that's a cop out answer. Yeah, you know that's a cop out. I'd say you know spinning the dice. One one I like. I make. Mean, a all the all the, the the heavy psych stuff, all the cover stuff from like way back in the seventies are sort of manifestations to me of what I've heard Dave talking about before I knew Dave and heard in the music before I knew Dave. And then it's just been enhanced by the process of working with Dave on this project. So it's just been uh, you know, so each one is another revelation in, in that realm of just celebrating celebrating the sweat of Stacia Stacia Blake, basically, ultimately. The uh, the holy sweat of Stacia Blake, but uh, I she think was the I got girl a... dancer in Hawkwind. By yeah, the way, yeah, come on, Stacia What's Blake that? was Stacia yeah. Blake was the uh... the naked lady. Yeah, yeah. in Hawkwind, but she was the yeah. bosomy, and she danced in Hawkwind. She yeah. wasn't always naked, but she was naked. She was naked when I enough. saw her, and I was enough. fourteen, man. <laughs> Full on, it was awesome. <laughs> I have to say, I don't, I don't like to say I. I wish I were alive at a different time, but I I think every time I talk to you, Dave, and you yeah. say things like that you saw Hawkwind when you were fourteen, I think I uh, I wish I I was alive, but I wouldn't have been a Ill, right. I would would have been just too. I wouldn't have been allowed to go see Hawkwind. <laughs> right. yeah. I was barely alive. I think I had to sneak out of my house. I mean, you were too young. Yeah. <laughs> you were too young, and I'm. I mean, I'm just saying, like it's just a matter of, of a few few years difference. That but, you, uh, know, you know something. It's weird because in the rock that and that you grew up with too, rock changed a lot year by year, or like maybe every two or three years back then. It's not like it is today, where everything's kind of static. You got your metal. You got the whole rock thing changed a lot from the '60s all through. The yeah, 60s. and by the time I mean every every couple. Of, of years. Just a few short years later, when I was 14, there was no naked ladies dancing on stage. No, I, I know. What happened to that? Yeah. There was like you too. I know. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, not, dude. No, I mean, it's just in a very short amount of time. Yeah. They made up a lot of rules since I was a kid. Yeah. It's yeah. all, you know, it was like there were no rules. When I was a kid, and no one was paying attention because the only people that were in those places were young people. There weren't it rock, loud rock, and that kind of stuff hadn't been around long enough for old people to even know what it was. Yeah, old like it was, rock and live, roll was only fifteen years old. Live Nation wasn't yeah. involved yet. 
No, it was all independent promoters and all that stuff. And, and there was, I mean, rock and roll itself was only about 15 years old. So that's brand new. Everything that, everything that was made up was brand new. Like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, the first big heavy bands like Hendrix and all that stuff, brand new. So you could go into these places and, and all this kind of stuff would go on. It was awesome. Thought, yeah, there was also in the, on the on the covers though, and I guess I mean getting getting <clears throat> down to what my favorite track was on the you know is I've got a soft spot for the Australian sounds, and so Dave also oh. takes the uh, takes the the covers to some other realms in the album. So speaking about the the early to mid '80s, I think the the Scientist cover I would say Solid Gold Hell just it hit hit me where I lived. So that was the uh, you know so maybe I'd put the gold star by that one I think as a as the uh, it's also kind of it's the one. That's one of my right favorite now. stupid. Yeah. How could you choose? Oh yeah, right, right. I just wanted to pick really interesting stuff that was fun and rocking all at the same time and moody, and that there was no no room for anything to be anything less than totally interesting. And uh, it's weird how like once you do that, it, it sets a really high bar, and it, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. I was like, no, this isn't right for this. This has got to follow this. This has to follow that. Not just a covers record, but an actual record. A record that you would put on to go into a certain space in your head. Yeah. The sequence of songs would go, oh, I want to I want to go to a better dystopia now, rather than I want to go to the Monster Magnet record or a covers record. Like, I want to go into this place. That's why it was important for me, to, for the album cover, to be so stunning and great. And I, I knew... Joe was the guy for it. As I thought the thing up, I was like, it's got to be Joe Tate. And I, I met him through you, Dave. Hey. That's true. I have to That's take true. credit for this. You song. did it. Yeah. <laughs> I got to yeah. take credit. You There's guys, a couple, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, couple super chats. Here. Super uh, chats. What's that? We love super, for, uh... super chats. People pay. Oh. Good money. All right. To have a sweet. Yeah. Wait, where? What the hell is the super to... chat? Uh, Chris, Matt... you read the super chats because yeah, people Matt... can they can highlight their comment in the in the live chat. And how much is know. that? Forty seven dollars. <laughs> no, I think it's uh whatever. I think you could pay as pay. little as just a penny, probably. Oh, okay, okay. Don't uh, say that out loud, Chris. Read the uh, super chats. Since Matt, I Matt Arnold hey, asked. Uh, he, he said to ask Joe Tate if he remembers Blackjack Poker and his Red Hot Poker. Oh, Blackjack Joker and his Red Hot Poker. Yeah, yeah, not that that really should be corrected by any means. Uh, yeah, Matt and I worked on a, a TV show in Iowa City back in the early 90s. Oh, wow. That maybe five people saw. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. I remember. Yeah. What, what yeah. was what was the show? Can what you this? Yeah, what was it? Bring us yeah, up to it, speed. We have no idea what you're talking it about. It was it was a college comedy show called Eggplant. And like we we were trying to do kids in the hall stuff, and it was a bunch of college idiots running around Iowa City. You know, I remember we we did a sketch where we like we were vegetarian hunters and we went out in the woods and like shot vegetables with shotguns. We U.S. Play. Army vet, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. U.S. <laughs> Army vet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your tax dollars at work. Your tax right dollars here. at work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think Blackjack Joker with his red hot poker was uh, was one of the writers who was a, a kind of a guy that 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 scared us all a little bit, and uh, would would write these these sketches that were extremely brutal, and. Like Nobody brutal in a good way, no, or extremely no, without without the umlaut, without the umlaut, oh, okay. and, the, and the and the Roman U. Brutal. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, no, it was this guy was yeah, yeah, it was a little scary. So I mean, you know, I'm sure I'm hope he's okay, you know, but we, we were also kind of dicks, so that's the other the other aspect of it. So, um, yeah, and then you come so, on, and this guy drags it all out, goes into yeah. the past, yep. and just yeah. reaches up into the colostomy bag and just drags. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Ooh. Matt. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Anybody okay. else want to come in there and yeah. rain on the parade? Somebody from junior high now. Anybody from me? Is that you... it? Yeah. <laughs> You're from Horace Mann Middle School. Come on. Yeah. I'm ready for it. There's some moments I'm not proud of. Go <laughs> ahead. I'm ready. Yeah. 
I never thought I'd get it on the Dave Hill Good Time Hour, but <laughs> what what do you what do you got, Dave? Give give us a yeah. taste of something. Just a well, confession of some. Oh, something equally oh, well, disturbing. I don't think anything spectacular. <laughs> Run of the mill, you know, uh, rock debauchery or something. But you know, yeah, you you, but all good debauchery. Oh yeah, it's very consensual. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes there's good, there's right. bad. Sometimes there's good, bad, and there's bad, bad. It mine was always good, bad. Yeah, Jeannie, good, good. Jeannie Murray uh, said that she was in Iowa City then, and she didn't know about the show, and she's bummed. <laughs> no, you oh, really man. didn't miss anything, Jeannie. You really, really <laughs> didn't. You really. Wait. It's better that you didn't see it. I yeah yeah. I've got some tape I can digitize. <laughs> Do it. Oh. You know I'm always ready. Yeah, yeah. I'll maybe get some super chats, and then they, then they can pay and, and watch. I want more videos. super chats. Yeah, I like yeah. The super more chats. super. Yeah. Did, did did you read all the no. super chats, Chris? Uh, there's another one from Matt. Uh, he asks, "What's it going to take to get Dave, Joe, Chris, and Des to Iowa City live recording of the Good Time Hour at Gabe's?" Wow, I would love to go Good. to Iowa City. I've never I, been to Iowa. To my knowledge, I've never been there. Can we set I'm, Joe up with like, like a Bob Ross thing with a pat, like he's painting while he's talking? Yeah. 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 Why now? We, oh, I'm the man. artist, and like I'm the musician. I'm the artist. Yeah. There's time for like, that. There's like, when I saw uh, Neil Young one time, he had someone painting on the side of the stage, the whole show. What? Really? Yeah. Sure. I guess this guy would like take. He was just on tour and would paint during the show. All right. And each, you know, throughout the tour, he would gradually get deaf. That would be pretty awesome. Yeah. I want that job. Yeah. That'd be a cool job. It's a pretty good job. Yeah. Assuming you like Neil Young, which I do. Right. Sure. Sure. I want to say my favorite song on A Better Dystopia, at least yes. as of the, right now, at this moment, is Be Forewarned. The pentagram cover. oh yeah i mean what a song what a that, song they don't write them like that anymore yeah that's yeah. one of the i killed i killed many a men <laughs> but what is, what is it i killed I, I yeah i'm i made love to many ladies i've been to bed yeah, with killed, many ladies i killed many a man before my 16th year was done that's one of the 16. greatest lyrics of all time <laughs> 16. It's 16. Where do you go from there? Right? He's the murderous. He's the uh, murderiest. Yeah. He's romance. The album, like, <laughs> Jonah Hex. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a great song. And Pentagram, I'm admittedly, I've only really, I guess I've been into Pentagram, not, and to my mind, not that long, but probably about <laughs> 15 years. <laughs> Which is not was sat, not nearly long enough, but when right. I just when I got turned on to Pentagram, uh, which I did just by reading, I was just reading on the internet, um, and it said I was reading about Saint Vitus, and it said they were influenced by Black Sabbath and Pentagram, so I was like, well, I better go listen to Pentagram right now. And then I only listened to Pentagram for like four months straight. Uh -huh. After that, and there the more there were there was we're speaking of underrated Matt Arnold during pedal talk. I think Pentagram is one of the most underrated bands, and that song is one of the greatest rock songs ever. And, and then was, you have Ma yeah. then what's he, that? That was done even before they were Pentagram. That was done as the Macabre. Oh yeah, because they had all the different names. Yeah, and I mean the pentagram story, as you know, the pentagram story was just basically yeah. a bunch of endless misfires. To this day, it's still going on. And then you you meet uh, I I I'm guess I I met Bobby Liebling once, and uh, yeah, and you're like, okay, now I get all of it. <laughs> totally i get I know, every uh, bit of it now a journalist that went and said i've got to meet this guy and you know he's been around forever i don't know how old he's in his 70s right 
Something. Yeah, he's got to be in his 70s now. Right. So, and he still goes on tour and stuff, and he, but he's like, you know, he's a special person. And uh, I guess at one point or another, he met some like young Dutch girl and got married. So now he's having like babies. Yeah, but I think that, I think Imagine. that may have. Hey, baby. Yeah, they were like, yeah. they were married and had a kid, but I think. Yep. I in the, I'm not. I feel like this is public record. I feel like they are not. Maybe not together anymore. I think. I oh, read. okay. But I. Uh, I this is internet. I think I read it on a reputable website, a metal website. I could be wrong about that though. He's 67, okay. by the way. 67. 67. Okay. Maybe that sounds. That sounds right. So we weren't far off. But like, yeah, what, Pentagram. Would, what a what a cool song to do, man! I was just like, I gotta sing this. Oh yeah, that's the funnest thing about this record was singing in all those different guys' styles, or you know, I mean, saying my tried to try to remain faithful to the melody and just you know, sing it myself. But it's like a singer's dream to do that. Yeah, and like you know, give me give me let me try that. You know, let me get a whack at it. And how how did you get it done during this? So this weird uh, plague year we've had. Hmm. Would you would you call the coronavirus the plague? Well, it's not the yeah. It's, it's, not, the gonna, uh, the, it's yeah. not the mask of the red death, right? But, right. You know, I would no, call but it it's. Play. I just figure this is the closest thing in our lifetime to a plague. Why? I'd rather not in... get any closer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly right. Yeah. So I think we can yeah. call it plague with a small p. I think it's more fun to call it a plague, and no one's yeah. doing it. No, you know, you get a lot of blowback. Like, you know, I, I made this... Uh, I'm going to get in trouble. Chris, edit this part of the show out. I, I, <laughs> no, I got I got in trouble with that, too. This, the first thing I did was, um, when we got back from Europe during the plague, the great plague of, of uh, 2020... Um, Let's call I, it the pandy. That softens it. Or the pandy, yeah, the pandy plague, that ussy <laughs> pay. Uzi play egg play. We got back from Europe just as the plague had stuck. The plague. I like saying that. The plague no, started. Let's call... People's flesh was falling from their bones. <laughs> I was in Spain watching people devolve into skeletons on stage. Exactly. Yet they still rocked. Yeah. But I was in Milan two days before Milan went down. Two days. And I'm on a bus like heading for Spain and I'm you know, on my phone, on the bus going, oh, uh, you know, this Corona thing, I think it just got a lot bigger. So we got to uh, one more week after that, in, all in Spain. And now I'm like haunted by these people faces. Like how many people did we play in front of? Like, aren't there anymore? Really weird. And, uh, yeah. So we got home and, um, we had the other part of this tour to do, which was the United the North American part. And of course, I'm like, we got to cancel this thing. It's it's not going to happen. Well, I want for once I have tickets too. Yeah, right, right. For once you have tickets. I'm ready. I was ready for that show. And I, I I I called up my manager, and said, I don't think we're doing this. This thing is going to happen. And all the promoters are like, Nope, everything's going on. You just go out there. I'm sure it'll be fine. And I looked at the calendar. I was like. Three weeks from now, I'm going to be in the middle of the country and the whole country is going to be locked down. I'm going to be paying for this tour bus. And I'm going to be, so I was just canceled it and then put out a flyer and they gave it to the record company. And it was a flyer of a, a, a great old illustrator named uh, Basil Wolverton. And it was like a plague picture. And then it's like Monster Man is Corona tour, you know, 2020 canceled. Well, you would have thought I just urinated to some mother's eyes because they just freaked out. That's insensitive and blah, blah, blah. This is a rock company. I was like, it's, what do you, what do you expect a rock band to do? Wait, what part were they uh, upset about? Just that we had even mentioned it and that I'd used a cartoon drawing of a plague. Oh, so this plague yes. thing, I shouldn't be throwing this plague around. all. Well, I mean, really. there weren't dead people in it, but they didn't look happy. And, uh, you know, I, I thought it, it communicated the message of this is why the tour is canceled. I mean, it's just a, 
I was like, I really got mad. I was like, this is your idea. This is what rock labels do now. They turn away from this stuff. It's like, it's funny. I feel like at the very beginning, people were overly sensitive to any kind of reference. The biggest bunch of crybabies I've ever seen in my life. It's like, they have no idea what's coming, you guys. Let me tell you what's coming. No, what I mean is like, the world can't handle something like this. They can't handle anything. Everybody's eating themselves alive. Crazy, oversensitive, moralizing pussies. <laughs> it never. It, you know, it's like it's it's the end of civilization. It's like grow up, man. Come on, you know, be strong. If you're strong of heart and you're a good person, you're a good person. You don't have to watch yourself that much. Speak your mind. You know, what, what everyone thinks that like the minute they speak anything else from what they're afraid to get in trouble for they're going to be like pinned as one of the guys that stormed the capitol it's not going to happen if you're not that person you're not that person no. i'm sick and tired of getting this tried to push on one side or the other buddy by the general internetness of yeah. the whole thing it's bad yeah. news i think i think i think everyone knows where you're coming from they better they better i've had it <laughs> now i'm just i i i miss the last couple of years have been such a freak show in the country with the horrible Trump thing that I think just basically a bunch of nice people and smart minded people kind of went too crazy the other way and forgot that the reason we're strong is because we can, you could talk your way out of it. But when you stop, when you start saying, don't talk, avoid things, not a good thing. I mean, I, I don't know any other civilization that walks out of that too well. Right. Yeah. Eventually yeah. it turns into you know what, you know? Yeah. So well, all right, I'm we'll done. Get... Let's get ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know what, we can we now, can go for about another 30, 35, 40 minutes on this. At least Oh, we well, for hours. Yeah. I mean it's, it's just like <laughs> comedy. For comedy days. got yeah. really kicked yeah. in the nuts. Comedy's yeah. been totally kicked in the nuts. It's like I used to depend on people on on the barometer of comedians to tell me how much was too much or how much the public could take. It was comedians and, you know, uh, TV stations and stuff would kind of show me which way the wind was blowing on the stuff. If I didn't agree with, if I thought someone was a, was a jerk off or horrible or in bad taste, I would tune them out, but I was glad it was there. Mm -hmm. Um, but an overwhelmingly cringing, uh, overwhelmingly cringing media, and cringing entertainment industry that stays away from all all stuff. I, I don't. I just don't know how they're going to have any credibility in the future because things aren't going to get nicer in the future because people say be nice. Right. You know why are mean people mean? <laughs> why are bad right. like all bad things will go away if we stop talking about it? No, they won't. They'll get worse. Right. Now you still managed to have two naked ladies on your new album cover, though. So thing you know. Sure. So there is, it's a triumph in know, these times. But it's weird how it goes. Uh, it, it's weird how it, this is interesting. It's selective. You know, now that I've mentioned this, yeah, somebody will go after that. But, um, <laughs> no, they won't. It, it's it, yeah. no, they won't. They, they will not. It's not that. It, I want it over the, I want it over my couch, over it's the fire. It's not the fact that it's, it's not the fact that, you know, I, believe me, it'd be easier for me to, um, I'd be a lot more comfortable going censorship is bad. But nobody's censoring anything. They're willing to censor themselves, which is disturbing. Who? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who? Who? Yeah. Who's willing to censor themselves but to look like a good guy? That's like it's 2021. Time for censorship is over. Now these guys think they're going to clean up the world. People think they're yeah. going to clean up the world by going, "Oh my gosh, that's horrible." They got another thing coming. Yeah. You know, and, 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 yeah, I'm not going to go get too deep for a second, but that that, that idea that and we kind of convinced ourselves that the, the the certain sort of knee jerk emotional things are the things that sustain the negative things in the in the universe, like uh, like dictatorship comes from hate, and dictatorship doesn't come from hate; it comes from a bunch of people thinking they're right, and that's the distinct right. you know. And so when you get any group that thinks that they're absolutely right and that this is the way it needs to be. That's when things get bad. Yeah, when I see absolutism 
in, in any form, I get nervous because it, it, it gets hijacked. It gets taped over. It, it gets politically used. And it's like the next thing yeah. you know, you're in a world that you never like, never in my wildest dreams could I imagine America going like, shh, you know, I mean, that's like, what? Shh, in America? Yeah. You're supposed to like good guys versus bad guys all the time. It's okay. Yeah. What do you think now, given like everything we've just been through in, in this country, especially do you, what my, my buddy Pat predicts there's going to be a massive disco era coming very soon. Huh. Huh. I, I can only you, hope I could see a, a couple of things like that happening, <laughs> yeah. but in, in concert with each other, like anything that's happened in the past, as a result of things could happen, but the everything travels so fast now I could see concurrent old fads happening at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's up. no there's no time yeah. for things to simmer. And and weird fusions. Yeah. Weird you know, it's fusions. Like that, yeah. yeah. It's like that thing where you see you know, where there's a, a culture that has not not been I don't know. It's like you imagine how how we look at, uh, say, the Renaissance, where we've not directly experienced this culture, but we have these sort of bits and pieces that we string together, and we dress up in those things that we understand the culture to be. But somebody from that culture, if they actually saw us in, you know, demonstrating what the culture would look like, we'd be like, what the, what the hell are you doing? This is ridiculous. This is not how it's not what I lived. You know, and I think that, like, I imagine we're getting to getting to a place where you're going to get a disco revival that is completely divorced from the context of disco, you know? So it's sort of this weird floating, <laughs> you know, thing that has picked up a whole bunch of other influences that have nothing to do with disco, but it, you know, it, it looks and feels right to the kids who are doing it, you know? So you have this kind of like a post-punk disco fusion, you know, or some kind of ridiculous, you oh, know, we're going to have no disc. wave again. Oh no. Yeah. yeah no. Right. I, I can't gonna, say yeah. another no way. Yeah, Giorgio yeah. Moroder and Lydia Lunch are the yeah. same, uh, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like, why wouldn't you want to dance away from what's going on? I mean, everything, yeah. you know, if I was a kid now, I mean, I didn't have any trust and authority when I was a kid because I grew up when, you know, Nixon was getting kicked out and when Nixon resigned, you know. When I was, I was like 12 years old when the Pentagon Papers came out and the Pentagon Papers were pretty much the first thing that showed on on paper that, the government had lied like for 50, you know, 40 years. And so you go, all right, that's the way the world's run. All right. Uh, we got problems. All governments have problems. We're not perfect. But as long as there's enough healthy discourse between both sides, we can work it out, you know. Um, and so I've always been a little bit, you know, uh, you know, I always got the stink eye on everything as far as the media is concerned and healthy. Um, I thought that was going to last forever, but we actually rolled back to the point where there are a lot of people now who really think, you know, it's a tribe that we're separate tribes in America, but we should be more one, you know, I mean, have, have the discourse out in public. But instead of this going into silos, literally these internet silos, everybody goes and has their own little tribe. Um, and, uh, and everybody goes, Oh, I don't want to talk about this. We won't, I don't even want to talk about this. You're a bad person for even bringing it up, you know, and you get put on a list. Yeah. And it's well, like, this is where I think Joe's suggestion of pop punk disco. Oh yeah. Well, oh unite, yeah. Mm -hmm. Unite yeah. everybody. For sure. Dave, when, what's going to go on? When, when are you going to get back out there with monster magnet? I know, I know you, you and I've talked about it a little bit, but we need for the people, we need the answer. As soon as I can, uh, looking at, um, obviously next year but next year isn't that far away now so no yeah. it's coming fast and hard far. we got something booked in europe for next summer i hope that stands and i'll try to fill in um united states whenever again but everybody and their brother is now waiting to get a gig you can imagine every live every every rock band is like put me in i don't think there's enough venues to hold now let me ask you this Assuming there is a the Monster Magnet European dates next summer, summer 2022. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, a Hawkwind-like dancer, but me. 
It's me, Dave. You know, yeah. you can do under, it. Under the yeah. right lighting. We do just yeah. bathe me in shadows. It's just the suggestion of sexy dancing. No one think, needs to know. I don't think I have enough red lights. <laughs> just well, to, you, you, you know, could do I it. just show Dude, a little pasty flesh now and again. I don't even think, why even try to hide it? I mean. Okay, put me front and center. It's, it's a new millennium. You know, it's like it's the 21st century. Um, just go out there and just do what you want. You know, let them let them make up their minds, and I will stand behind you 100. percent Okay, I like you your can, idea better you can better than the shadows but idea. But you will have to yeah. explain yourself because I'm not going to do that. So, um, <laughs> just give me. I'm telling if you, just ask give me, me a question <laughs> about Dave's dancing. I'll be like, oh, yeah. let me introduce you to Dave. I'm telling you, just give me one night out there. I want to see not, like, if it's not working. I'm on the next plane home. Bug-eyed and frothing. Just playing with your nipples. I, Bug eyed, that'd, frothing. That'd be the first song. Yeah. That's my first move out of the gate. Yeah. That's the opening song. I, that, that, yeah. And and that'll be the name of the next monster man. Yeah. Bug eyed and frothing. Like frothing. Yeah. Bug eyed and, and frothy. With a portrait of you by it's, Mr. Joe Tate. I'm yeah. On it right now. You're gonna... It's synergy. It's all coming together. Take it. Wait, Chris, did you do a mock-up of the cover that was just described? Chris is putting something on the screen. Yeah, here. I can't, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. <coughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, that's the, yeah. man, that's one of the greatest videos I've yeah. ever seen oh, in my life. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Chris was, Chris oh, was yeah. saying, <laughs> for for the listener, it's a it's the clip from the witch taint video yeah, yeah. for Ready for Love where the bird flies into my jumpsuit. Chris, Chris pointed out it's the one year, the one year anniversary of that happening. You're the only person in the world. About right. that would it. I yeah. think uh, Matt yeah. Arnold said it's the one year anniversary, so you I can mean, verify. There's so many variables here that can never be repeated, beginning with the suit you're wearing. Yeah. Because, well, <laughs> I have yeah, that honestly, suit. I wore that in the world that would wear that. Guess, yeah. Okay, that's one variable out of the way. The other thing, the makeup. The other with yeah. your like with your uh, Dorothy Lamore kind of pose, <laughs> and then a, a a wild bird. Yeah, it flew. It was real. the The worst thing is, pe some people have suggested that it was staged, like there was someone off camera throwing this poor little bird at right. me. Can't do that. With Which birds. is horrible. Yeah. There's absolutely no way I would do. You know, I, I watched yeah. I watched a Marx Brothers movie and they they like kind of just tossed animals around all the time back then. It was it was a simpler time. They did. Yeah. yeah. But no, for some of the, what is it? A sparrow? Like, yeah. If it was it a snake, like, yeah, yeah. if it was a snake, I'd be suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If a snake just fell on your head, I'd like somebody threw that snake. Yeah. yeah. No, the bird. Yeah, I didn't even know at the time, and we would we discuss this. I didn't even know what was going on. I just knew something was wrong. <laughs> something Some with feathers. Li yeah. Living something being. Something with feathers is close to my body. And I was just kind of shaking. And fortunately, I saw the little guy or girl fly away, and they were they were fine. Did you so it all worked like, out? Did you feel any beak or talon? A little talon. Yeah, little talent. Enough to let me know the bird meant business, but I didn't right. know if it was like a bat or like uh, some, you know, some insect I wasn't familiar. I just knew something right. was wrong. There's like, really was... no, uh, there's no period of time where you flinch at all. Like it just flies yeah. right into your head. Well, that's yeah. professionalism. Well, yeah, you're in. Yeah, you're <laughs> on the whole time, and it burrows down in there. It goes, it goes deep for a while. It like it didn't just bounce out of there it went it went and yeah. tried to make a little home I f bird was it, like then fly into the dog collar yeah, it did true. but you know that's true <laughs> yeah i know it is good at miss yeah. the yeah there it down is it going goes. down it's going, going down. down go yeah yeah it was kind of like going down into my teeth area yeah it was good to suckle <laughs> and to suckle, uh suckle some teeth to my, yeah. you don't really, you can't really see it in the clip there though. But I finished the take. The bird flew out away. It was fine. The bird was okay. Right. I finished the take. I kept shooting. Yeah, that's why you're a pro. 
Yeah. Well, it's kind of, you know, I, I saw you a couple times over that summer there, Dave. And yes. This, the, none of the, like the authenticity of this is, does not even, I mean, like, I'm not even phased by it. This is like, <laughs> this is what you were doing, like before I, I got like... there and after I left. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that this is what you were doing. Oh, yeah. You I, lived you know it. Many, I... You yeah. know how many times I've watched this privately? <laughs> many, many, many times. Just because of the variables I said, I was like, this can never happen again in this way. There's never again yeah. or before has a man dressed this way in this situation with the bird, the whole thing. It's just, it's done. It's a one time deal. Yep. It was a magical moment. And Little somewhere fellas that out bird there somewhere. Is out there yeah. waiting for his close up. That's right. <laughs> he, he, he hangs outside your window every night tweet tweet yeah. when am i gonna come on the show yeah. i want i wonder though they say birds can talk i wonder like if the bird then was like you guys you're not gonna believe this they what say birds happened. can talk they the science <laughs> the uh aviary community <laughs> the ornithologists right. ornithologists ornithologists thank you they say that birds can talk they have a whole language and I'm they, just wondering. Can. I, I, we can, I can get you an ornithologist on this show, Dave. Now you so tell I, me. I can do it. How long will we know each other? Now you're telling me. All right. I'm going to go to that neighborhood and put up flyers and see if they're <laughs> you know, Like, I remember last year. Are you yeah. still around? If you're not too busy with your new bird family, <laughs> come on Dave's show. <laughs> it's, 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 it might have been, might been too scarred. That bird might have yeah. been traumatized. True. I, I, mean, I was traumatized. Be, you know, yeah. his, his wife has left him. Yeah, he just had a giant know. hairy <laughs> nipple. <in his> hand. <laughs> <laughs> my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it must. He's, yeah. Because you got to figure, like, those, my, you know, just the scale of it to run into my hairy chest. Yeah. Yeah, uh, to, a, to a bird, that's like. The nipple would be like this yeah. big, right? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. would be like a basketball-sized like nipple. A, that's like a Harryhausen thing. That's like a that's like a you know, a, a Harryhausen movie, right? There. <laughs> it's Ray it's giant, the giant, the giant stop-motion animated teat. Yeah, and in the I mean, the uh, hair, that yeah. must have been like a look oh, at you, man. panic. Like, yeah, and it's such a great face right before oh. you're like totally yeah. doing it. Yeah, and then but uh, and you can I know, and you making, catch that. You catch that glimpse when it hits, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had no idea what was going on. I was just like, something is wrong. I'm under attack by something, and I have yeah, no I, idea what. Yeah, I get what. it. I get it, totally. There's every reason to make that face. Yeah. I feel like all things considered, I handled it really well. Uh, you, oh, absolutely. The fact that we have this marvelous piece of uh, piece of video. Yeah. Do you have your phone on like a like a tripod or something? Yeah, I just bought a tripod. I don't know. I noticed there's no video past that one point, so I don't know if you yeah. like ran around in circles. <laughs> no. Ah! <laughs> like 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 the, the Scooby Doo, you know, yeah, scooping like around scoop. on the. On the... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna release the full clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want no, we I... want more footage. Like this. I I you think use this second. clip in the music video. Yeah, it's in the Witch Tame video, Ready for Love. I'd like to see if it could be recreated with all those variables so we can get yeah. as many people to volunteer this summer to every day dress exactly like you did, lay in their backyard with, with a tripod camera to see, can, can this ever happen again? I mean, so if we had a thousand people laying in their backyard this summer dressed as you were, just Me? waiting <laughs> for another bird, like, could it happen? Maybe it could be one of those things. What's it called? The late, so. the ladies that wear the purple dresses and the red, it's like the red hat society. The red hats. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The red hats. It could be like the red hats, where people, the, everyone gets together <laughs> on a certain day. The bird teats. It's the, the red thing. hats. What it's the the red hats <laughs> you know are inspired by a poem, I think. Right. I don't know which poem. Yeah, I don't know anything about the red hats. Okay. Something, yeah, my mother. We're gonna check on this. I think was was in it. But it's or women, <laughs> women, uh, you know, once uh, women of a certain age, I guess you would say, mm -hmm. uh, they get together and they run around in purple dresses with red hats. I think there's maybe a luncheon involved. 
sounds good. That's what I understood. Yeah, That's it's a positive, good. very positive event. Finger sandwiches. Yeah, yeah finger it sounds sandwiches. Like it's very much such. a finger sandwich thing. And then they Actually, they so scam. But maybe there could be like a similar thing where it's people the red. put on. F- get the a red couple. Of, you mean to get a couple of those broads to lay in the backyard, wait for a bird to fly in their dress? <laughs> <laughs> The Red Hat Society. It's an international social organization founded <laughs> in 1998. It's only yeah. from the late 90s, though. That's kind of... Yeah, 25,000 so. members. 20, that's not too bad. That's Open to an, all ages now. Yeah. I know there's all ages now. researching the Red Hats right now. Yeah. I don't see any of these guys jumping to Google. Yeah. I'm going to be up all night reading about the Red Hats. About the Red Hat Society. I met I met a Red Hat, one of the Red Hats once, not to brag. Was she in uniform? She was not. She was undercover. Okay. <laughs> it was when I was in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Really? Yeah, I was at a bed and breakfast, and the woman, we got to chatting. Motions this is a full-on out. international uh, uh, organization. Oh yeah, or at least North America, probably England too. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, that's super very English much, yeah. to scamper around in a red hat. Actually, kind of reminds me yeah. of those ladies that they're on the beginning of the Manchurian Candidate. They actually <laughs> turned out to be <laughs> Russian and North Korean, yeah. Korean uh, torture <laughs> brainwashers yeah. or something. Yeah, remember that scene, Joe, in that movie? Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have some tea, and then all of a sudden yeah. it turns into like <laughs> some like bald headed like pulp. Pulp style Russian right. villain from the nineteen late nineteen fifties, yeah. like what? <laughs> Baiting their brain. Uh-huh. Yeah. Dave, when are you, when are you gonna get uh you gonna record a new album this this fall? I, I gotta write it first. I wrote about three songs. Um, I really just want to play. For a while, I don't feel like writing. I feel like just playing. So, I mean, I'll I suppose I'll write and Did gather you- enough stuff. I pose this question to both of you and everyone. Des, Chris, did you guys find it hard to be creative during the pandy? Yeah. No, not at all. You you did not. No. Yeah, no, I was told it was it was one of the best things that ever happened to me creatively. I mean not you know, not to minimize the suffering outside of my life. Oh no, that goes without saying. Show off. No, I <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I got it. Well, yeah, right. No, no, I really, I, I, it was great. It was really creatively, it was fab- fabulous. Still, I got a lot of work done and did a lot of great awesome. stuff, including the album. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You were going at it, Joe. You had a million things going on. Yeah. I would just get like you know I wouldn't hear from him for weeks and then I'd get this like, <laughs> like this stuff that's glowing off my phone. I was like, wow, this is. This is insane, like above and beyond the call of duty. Joe's you know? prolific like that. Yeah. He is a force. Joe Tate is a force of uh it's amazing. Like you could we could just uh describe something and then he'll come back and be like it's a massive work of art inspired by exactly <laughs> what we said. It's deeply the, disturbing how the thing with you on the there, bike right? is yeah. The thing with you on the bike is amazing. Which one? The witch taint drawing? Yeah. Uh, is it a witch taint drawing, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Frazetta one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. That's that's one of my favorites. That's all Frazetta, though. I just I just copied Frazetta. That was, you know. I yeah, mean, but you thought of it. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone, I think he could look for, to, you know, 25,000 miles in any direction. I don't think anyone would go, like, I see this guy as, as the berserker, you know, <laughs> as Frank Frazetta. <laughs> I ha- I have Joe Tate artwork all over my my apartment. It's it's pretty I, much the uh, I have a Joe Tate original. As do I. Yeah. That's true. I think that's how this started. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly how. That's it started. exactly it. Yeah, is uh, <laughs> uh, Joe Tate gave me um some artwork he had done inspired by things Dave. Mm-hmm. I think that you had talked about maybe. On the old yeah. WFMU yeah, oh, show, yeah, 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 on the goddamn Dave yeah. Hill show, yeah, and, and then uh, I got it to. Is that how it happened, or no? Maybe I think so. Joe, did you somehow? I somehow, gave it to you. Yeah, I gave it to you, and you gave it to Dave for sure. I did. I gave yeah. it to Dave because 
so you wouldn't have his address and, and, right, and murder right. him. It just, it, it just, just seemed case. appropriate. It seemed appropriate. Yeah, speak, speaking of the yeah. murder thing, could you explain to Joe the stuff that we talked about when you had first met Joe? And oh, oh. A little bit. <laughs> you didn't really know him, but you're about to take a trip with him and yeah. what your thoughts were. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My thinking, I think it's in my my yeah, my uh, best selling book, Park yeah, the Moose. Yeah. Is basically, I th I didn't know Joe well. He seemed like a cool guy. I had ha hung out with him a couple times. But I thought since his dad was a uh, famous uh, sports announcer in Cleveland, there's no way he would murder me because <laughs> oh, he wouldn't no. that would bring shame upon the family. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so it was because I'd grown up listening to his dad call uh local sports yeah. games. Like, yeah. I was just oh, like, yeah. well there's there's no way he's going to he's going to These guys don't do that. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Cuz then his dad no. would have to answer for it on the news. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. It's so just, there's yeah. no there's no it's chance. Totally but ridiculous. I I stand behind <laughs> that that logic even though, you know, <laughs> Airtight. That would have been enough for me. Airtight. I'm like, oh no, there's, there's no yeah. way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. to his credit, I'm still here. That's right. Yeah, there was no, there were no murders. Alive, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So there. So there was, yeah. I, I, I guess keeping that in mind, I don't know why I didn't just put you in direct touch. Well, I, I guess you know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just uh, was concerned. That you were going to kill Dave anyway. I just I'm more comfortable that way anyway. I didn't know Dave. I, I knew Dave. Well, as a I mean, I could have killed him too. I mean, you're worried about him. <laughs> I know. I guess it. I, I want your arm. Let me come over. Both ways. Yeah. Yeah. It could, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it could go both ways. It all worked out great. Because, <laughs> it worked out good. Yeah. Good. I'm gen. I'm generally <laughs> concerned when introducing people to each other that I'm trying to make sure. They're not going to kill each that. other. Do anything weird. Well, I remember Dave when you when and I can't remember who it was, but when you were you were introducing me to somebody, and you were telling the story like of going to you know of like or it was kind of like it was somebody that you had known for a long you know, much longer than me, and you know, and there was sort of a a bit of a you know who is this guy and why is he here vibe to the conversation, and you said to the person, I remember, you know, he's, he's a nice guy. And he's not a rapist, so. You know, that was <laughs> so we got that out of the that way. That was it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, go, he's cool. I love to pay compliments whenever yeah. I can. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, it was. It felt really good. And it's good to clarify. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, yeah, I could sense that that was a concern. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to get it out of the way. You could sense it. That sense it. Well, I mean, yeah. Joe, you know, I think it's great, but you often, you often, you know, you yeah. have a, a like a an army jacket on often, it, which oh. suggests, hey, this guy could be a drifter. This guy could be a drifter. This guy's on the lamb, right? Little you know. Travis, Travis Bickle. Yeah, yeah. 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 A, oh, yeah. It's, a, it's a red, yeah. you know. Nah, but it's not. I mean, it, I'd be more worried about the mustache, and I worried about the army jacket. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's like you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 When I was yeah, uh, you raised uh, a hell of a stash. I can't get one. Like I tried one time and it just yeah. fizzle out. Yeah, it's just not a hairy guy. I tried to get I wanted to get the most evilest I wanted to twirl my mustache basically. Yeah, yeah. And so, laugh like that. <laughs> And I, I just, it would just fl flop and flounce. I'm sure there's some sort of extensions, like a, a mustache weave you could get. All right, I'm going there in tomorrow. Go. There you go. I mean, yeah. if I have to staple some like dog hair on it, that's <laughs> something to think about. We, uh, we're, we're at the end of our, uh, we got to ride off into the, the podcasting sunset here in a oh. second. What? Ooh, oh. Wait, wait. So there'll be a new Monster Magnet al album eventually, a tour. Hopefully, it certainly will. There'll probably be a Monster Magnet album by next year sometime. And <laughs> everyone, everyone, go if you want to see Joe Tate's artwork. Go to follow him on Instagram at Joe Tate Art. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. You get Joe Tate Art. There are two. There's Joe Tate Art and there's Tate Joe. Tate Joe has more dog pictures on it. That's the difference. So yeah. 
So, so if, if you want to see Joe Tate's dogs, <laughs> right? Go to Tate Joe. Tate Joe. Tate Go Joe. to Joe Tate Art. That's where that's pure art. Mainline pure art. art. Now yeah. I'm torn because they're both great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, thank yeah. you guys. Two thank of my you. favorite people. Two of my favorite oh. artists. It was a pleasure, Dave. And you Indeed. brought it together. You make it, once yeah. again the Dave Hill effect is is uh, multi pronged. It heals the world. It's it's a it heals the world. It really does, if nothing else. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, boy criminal Chris Gersbeck. Thank you, New Jersey Chicken Rancher, and and John Ham lookalike, Des. Got it. And everyone for uh for joining us watching live. And thanks for everyone listening in the futuristic podcast format. If you would like to support this <coughs> program, that's right, maximumfun.org slash join. We'll see you next time. Oh, this is a slick ending where the music yeah. comes up. I love this. Oh, this is strong. There we go.